Are you ready for some absolutely adorable Christmas projects? Have you seen the IOD Christmas transfers for 2024? Well, they are amazing, and you better get them before they're gone. Today's project is these absolutely adorable shelf sitters, and they are kind of like a double Christmas tree, one in the front and, uh, and one in the back, so they're nice and thick. I think they're about an inch thick, and they are the perfect little shelf sitters. And I am using the IOD Christmas 2024 Kitschy Christmas Transfer, and the first thing I'm doing is I am getting these painted. I'm using chalk synthesis paint. You do not need a primer when you use chalk synthesis paint, so it's working perfectly, and I'm blending it a little bit to make it fun. The two colors that I am using, one is a robin's egg blue, and the other color is called palm trees, but it was never, it is in a wise owl paint, but it was never made into a paint. So it was just something that didn't make the cut of a new color. And it's kind of like a bluish green. And you'll see once this dries, it dries a little darker. And it is the perfect color for a kitschy Christmas tree. I got these Christmas trees at Michael's at the end of last year. And I don't think they have them anymore. They don't have them online, but they have something similar, which I will go ahead and I will put it in the description, but they are really fun and they may have them in the store because I think I probably bought them in the store, but they're pretty nice. They're about $8 each and they work perfect for this project. I do go back a couple of times and blend in some darker and then some lighter just so that I have some variation when it's done. And they will dry a little darker and especially will be a little darker once I put the top coat on them because chalk paint does not have any reflection until act after you put the top coat on. Once they were all dry, I put the top coat on them, Wise Owl Varnish. And I have to do a top coat because I am going to be adhering transfers to them as soon as they dry. So let's open that kitschy transfer and see which ones we want. I don't want the designs that have a background. So I want the ones that don't have already white behind them or another color behind them. So I'm going to take that deer. I like these bells. They also are very kitschy and do not have a design behind them. And I really like this little singing angel. She's perfect. And I need to take some of these garlands because I want to make um, garlands around my tree as I put the little kitschy designs on it. And you'll see... It's amazing what a little detail, what a difference that little detail will make. I am putting the center piece down first. I'm going to burnish that down. And after that's all burnished down, then I'm going to add in the garland around it. And what I want to do is I want to make that garland look like it's coming out. It's behind the little whatever I use. And in this case, the little Bambi. You'll see as I put this garland down that I really am conservative. I want to save every little piece because there's lots of other pieces in this transfer. It's just full of stuff and I may need that garland as decoration on something else. But I am going to put garland on all three of, of the trees. Actually, I end up making four and it's all going to be in the same place. So they're going to be like a set when they're all done. And when you're working with little tiny pieces like this, it's a little more difficult. You really have to hold on to them when you burnish them down to make sure that they don't come up and, and then not get burnished down.
This is going to go pretty fast because I don't want to have these long silences where you're just watching me work. So I'm going to make it go a little quicker. It's pretty much the same format. I just cut the pieces into small pieces so I can make them look like they're coming out from behind the little kitschy design. And you'll notice I save every tiny little piece of these to um, finish the design because once they're gone, they're gone. I wanted to frame in the tree design. So what I did is I took um, a glaze and I just really, really rubbed it in to that behind the tree tree. And it just made the actual Christmas tree stand out a lot. And it was just so cute. And it finished it off. It kind of really framed it in. I have a collection of these Christmas motifs on Christmas cards from the 1940s and 50s. And along with the really colorful, pretty, really adorable designs, almost all of them are flocked or glittered. So we couldn't finish our project without a little bit of glitter. So I am using a glitter pen and I am going and I'm going to put glitter on every one of the ornaments so that they have a nice little shiny glimmer in the light. And then add it to Santa Claus, maybe to just places where I think will really make a big difference. The glitter pen is from Pentart. And it's, it's a clear glitter. It's not colored. It's just got a little bit of iridescence in it. And once everybody was all glittered up, it was time to let them dry. And it takes a little while to let them dry. And then I actually went in and I put a little bit of glitter all around the um, bottom tree, the one that I had put a little bit of glaze on. And they are ready to go. And that wraps up day two of the Countdown to Christmas Challenge. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.